So you are the managing director at Affordable Cremations Limited. That's correct. All right. So before we get in-depth into the conversation, why don't you tell me a little bit about what Affordable Cremations Limited is? Absolutely. Well, we are a new company as of um, 2014. Okay. And Affordable Cremation Options, it is a licensed, locally owned and operated establishment. Um, we are committed to providing simple, flexible, yet meaningful um, choices to the families and the people that we serve. Okay. Um, we are located in Mississauga, however, we're capable of serving anyone throughout the GTA. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic in the sense that you've established your business, yes. <laughs> not necessarily uh, the idea of funerals, obviously, I'm, I'm not calling that fantastic, but um, I'm interested to know, you know, just, just preparing for this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's there's such there's so much heaviness to the subject, right? I wonder uh, the very idea of preparing for a funeral might be in uh, in some ways blasphemic for most people because you know they think you know you live life as is when mm -hmm. it happens it happens. Mm -hmm. How do we go about the conversation of actually preparing for a funeral, be it a cremation, be it a burial, or so on? Actually, that's an excellent question. That's part of my passion is encouraging people to have that conversation. Uh, we're human too. Right. It's, it's not an easy topic to discuss. And part of my role as a licensed funeral director for about 14 years now is promoting that conversation. Okay. Um, if anything, my the experience that I have in dealing with at this point thousands of families and seeing right. people um, at one of life's most difficult times is all the reason enough to agree and understand yeah. why it's important. You know, to I have to ask. I have mm -hmm. to ask. Is it? Does it ever happen? Does it cross your mind? Uh, and this is slightly off topic, but does it cross your mind that you might become desensitized to death and suffering through through this regular occurrences in your life? I guess that's always um, a potential thing that could happen. However, um, very in the first few years, I learned very quickly how to handle my emotions surrounding the topic. And ultimately, the main goal is just helping the family that needs your assistance at that time. Right. If you focus on that, anything's possible. The importance of having the conversation. Now, now you said that you had this conversation with people, but that's one thing. What would you recommend for people who maybe, and, and, and I say this with all the sensitivity in the world, viewers, I, I hope you understand. Let's say a, in house A, you know, family member A has a feeling, that family member B has been sick for a few years, diagnosed with a severe condition, and you, as human beings, sometimes we can tell, you know, the end is near, mm -hmm. right? Now, it, it's one thing for an outsider to go and speak to, but how does family member A have that conversation with family member B? Do, would you not assume it's something that requires a lot of courage? Absolutely. Um, we're all human. None of us want to talk about the topic, think about it, but it is a reality. We do live in a death-denying society, but at Affordable Cremation Options, part of our um, part of what we want to pass on to people is that, you know, having this conversation needs to occur before we're in the middle of dealing Absolutely. with somebody being right. sick or ill. Yes. Um, and there's, I mean, when we're emotional, we don't always make the best decisions. Hence the reason we promote pre-planning of one's cremation or burial, burial options in addition to having the end-of-life conversation. What's the plan? We plan for retirement, we plan for our wedding, for children's education when they go off to school. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we plan for this as well? Would you say maybe writing a will, and forgive my ignorance, would, would that be part of the planning process? Absolutely, having a will, yeah. power of attorneys, planning your cremation or burial, whether it's a service, a celebration of life, a gathering, whatever you want to refer to it as, it's yeah. all part of it. And to be honest, if you're married, I feel another part of it is <sighs> discussing with a spouse what you know what it is that you look after it's not only have you just lost the love of your life hopefully yeah. um, but it's a double whammy you've lost somebody that you've been married to for 60 plus years yet you're also now learning how to pay the bills or do the laundry or cook it's all it's almost like you're suddenly single and are now replacing filling in what that person did for you it, it yeah. I, that is all part of the discussion. You know, you make you make a very valid point, but even even just listening to you say that, yeah. it's giving me goosebumps. You know, just the very thought of it because I I can't. You know, I I have, I've grown up in a culture. I've I watched Bollywood movies. You yes. know, you know, I've idolized. You know, the idea of romance. You know, me and my wife will often say things like, "We lived together for hundred years and a hundred oh. years after." <laughs> the, so the notion, the idea of having a serious conversation about this is is really, really scary. So. 
I, I, my guess is, and, and this is pure speculation, my guess is, you know what, Tara, most people probably don't know how to have this conversation. So when you step in, or some of your colleagues mm -hmm. at work step in, mm -hmm. what's the process over there to bridge that gap, you know, take away the emotion and bring the reality into it? Yes, well, it's not that we eliminate the emotion. I mean, we're, this is a natural thing to have different thoughts and feelings about. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that we do offer is a service of, whether it's over the phone, in person, at, in the comfort of your own home, or at our uh, consultation office in Mississauga, we're more than happy to help facilitate that conversation, whether it's initially one-on-one -on -one with somebody or if you wanted to bring your children we encourage everyone to be a part of that topic mm -hmm. um, and that talk mm -hmm. um, and there's no cost for us to assist yeah. with that um, we're more than happy to help not to put you on the spot have, have there been in your uh, since you mentioned you've been in the industry for so yes. long yes. Uh, ha has there ever been a situation where maybe like you you yourself might have struggled to cope like seeing the emotion of it um, absolutely, that's yeah. exactly how I ended up in the business, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, it stems back to uh, my early teenage years, but I had a cousin who died at a very young age. I'm sorry to hear that. And um, to make a long story short, it was that experience that is the reason I looked into this as a profession. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I yeah. probably wouldn't have thought of it. You know, that's that's an interesting point you you bring up. Of course, uh, you mentioned that you had a reason for getting into the industry, mm -hmm. uh, which makes me even question, how does the industry function you know what are some maybe some myths that people have about the industry because don't get me wrong I have a lot of people who say you know it, it's common speak you know when someone passes away over oh, the year I've been to funerals yes and it, it's funny that even it's not funny maybe it's 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 sort of ironic that even when I'm at funerals a conversation that often comes up is hey pet these guys are making lots of moolah ah. right mm -hmm. so is, is, is that a myth is uh, what's the reality behind that you know the conception is it's 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 mm -hmm. a selfish business but okay. I, I believe it's not as black and white as that well I could I have a lot of things I could say about Please. that because no I appreciate that, that. Um, question so first of all some of the myths are that we are undertakers we're people should be afraid of us we only dress in black <laughs> I wore color today on purpose because yes. we're things are things were things are changing we want to give people what they want um, on the topic of funerals being expensive and so on if you notice our name it is called affordable, affordable. cremation options right um, and we as a company have have done things such as um, we don't have as much overhead as let's say traditional funeral homes so okay. our goal is to pass that savings if you will on to family client families that need our services mm -hmm. so what we've done is we have eliminated unnecessary facility charges as well as staffing char um, staffing fees that don't necessarily apply so we literally give people what they want and only charge them for the services that they've asked for okay so, so that so helps you, eliminate so, so that, that so you try your best at least in your business to make it affordable for people absolutely to do so. we are not a traditional funeral home in right. that regard so yes. Because of that reason, we're able to charge l less than what a traditional okay, that's fair. establishment. Might. You know, Tara, one one thing I wanted to ask you. You know, we, we are in Peel region today. You yes. know, uh, even in fact, I guess you can extend this to a large, to a large part of the Greater Toronto area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a multicultural mosaic over here. You know, you have people with different cultures, yes. different beliefs. You know, we have we have Catholics, Protestants, and that's just going into Christians. Then you have mm -hmm. your Hindus, Muslims. Seeks. Uh, are these options uh, favorable to all cultures that you provide? Absolutely. I know our name does refer to affordable cremation options. Yes. However, uh, I am a funeral director. If, yeah. we, if somebody wanted to be buried, we can assist with that as well. Right. Um, we've just noticed that more and more people are looking at cremation, but either way, we're able to yeah. help people and we welcome serving people of all different faiths and cultures. In fact, that's one of the things I love most about um, being a funeral director is I, I learn so much in the pre-planning side of things I learned right. so much about people's lives and culture and religion yeah and not to mention sometimes at their homes they they treat me to traditional snacks or meals yeah. so yeah. we welcome serving and, and everybody and anybody that's that's really interesting you mentioned that uh, one thing I, uh, one thing I caught upon in your answer is you said a lot of people are now starting to choose cremations mm -hmm. is, is there a specific reason behind that well, a lot of um, people would claim um, it comes down to being more cost effective. Yes, depending, there's numerous um, options, and I won't get into that now, but depending on choice that somebody makes or a family makes, it can cost less. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason. Um, other reasons could be it's just 
somebody's personal preference or religion mm -hmm. um, or because they didn't put the time and effort into researching or looking into this prior to ever needing the services sometimes people make that decision so almost like correct me if I'm wrong is, is it almost like okay it's time for the funeral and when they find out the cost of a burial is X amount mm -hmm. they realize that the cremation at Y amount is more affordable Absolutely. is that what you're suggesting I'm sure that's part of it yeah. and that's one of the reasons why coming back to talking about funeral homes making a lot of money and so on that's why we promote pre-planning well it's not the only reason right it prevents emotional overspending should someone pre-fund their funeral ahead of time or arrangements whatever that may be you're not actually paying a funeral home funds stay in your name but we at affordable cremation options would guarantee or freeze our costs mm -hmm. at today's prices so that that doesn't exist in any any other service or industry as far as I know mm -hmm. so technically speaking for a service that we all unfortunately will eventually need um, you can pay today's prices, have tax-free growth on those funds, and not until you need us. That's when the funds are forwarded to the provider. That's really interesting. Now, is, it, is this done in liaison with a bank or financial institution? Yes, there's massive legislation and regulations I can imagine. Um, in the funeral and like any industry in Canada. Oh like yes, any industry. So in Canada. lots of paperwork, but right. it's worth it. <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned this, and and I, it, I guess it goes back to that having that conversation. Yes. You know, uh, I'll be honest with you, Tara. I think I think most people, you know, I I graduated from school maybe about seven eight years ago. I've been in I've been a working person in Canada now for about uh, eight years. I would say most of my friends, mm -hmm. right? One of the questions we often have is it's so difficult to save. It's so difficult to pay our debts. Yes. You know, we're getting more and more reliant on our credit cards. How do we factor that mm -hmm. into this conversation? You know, um. because it it is. And, and th no doubt that some services like yours are cheaper compared to the industry, mm -hmm. but it is at, at the end of the day a financial commitment. What are some of the avenues you would suggest in mm -hmm. terms of actually planning this out? Because it, it might be difficult for many people. Absolutely. So when you pre-fund arrangements, whatever they may be, uh, you can actually look at doing it in the form of a payment plan to make it um, so that it isn't a burden. The point of this is to lessen the burden that we're all right. talking about. Right. If you wait to the time of need, you're paying whatever the current day cost is, and you do not have the option to make a payment plan. Right. So even when you pay over a period of time, you're still able to guarantee our costs at present day. That's that's so. that's interesting. So d does it? Ha I I know I know. And not that I'm tying the two together. Although okay. some might say, uh, some people, I know some people who said the day I got married was my dad. <laughs> but, you know, you know how people go into wedding debt. I wonder, yes. is there a concept of funeral debt? <laughs> I don't know. Um, funeral debt. You know? Well, I guess. I guess there could be. Yeah. Um, again, that would be specific to a family's decision as to how they go about right. dealing with the funeral home. So yes. I won't get into that. But okay. um, the point is we don't want people to go in debt. So we've yeah. made changes in our model of how we run our business so that okay. we can keep the cost low, still provide the, the same amazing service. We pay attention to detail. Yeah. Um, we're attentive listeners, as we talked about. We want to make sure people are happy. That's and well happy as they can be, be exactly and our our level of service it, that's the most important thing to us if you don't have happy customers what's the point <laughs> Tara you know what time's just flown by it's been it's been great speaking to you Likewise. just before we go really quickly in 10 seconds the website for affordable cremations yes the website is www.affordablecremationoptions.net well, Tara, the settings might be a bit morose, uh, but I think you've, you've shed light on something that's really important and people should plan for. Uh, so we really thank you for coming on Cable 10 Live, and we wish you at Affordable Cremations all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much.